So the next thing we're going to look at then is start to add uh, details and things like that. So what we're going to do then, so we're going to modify and then under modify, we're going to go to appearance or again, there's a keyboard shortcut letter A. So I'm going to click on A. And then so Lego blocks obviously are made from plastic. So we're going to just make this menu a little bit bigger if I can stretch it out. There we go. So let's go to plastic and let's go to ABS. Now you'll find there is a huge amount of materials already built into Fusion for you. So we're going to ABS, I'm just going to drag it over. But I don't want it to be white, so I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to change the color. So let's see what color. Let's go like that and done. Okay, so we've got our first Lego block done. Now what we're going to look at is obviously no one just has one Lego block, okay? And we want to show off the modeling skills of one Lego block, but we want to show multiple to make it look, give it more context in terms of when we do our final render and hand in our work. And if you were to present something to say a client, you wouldn't just hand in like a single thing. You'd want to show it in the context of how it would be used. So more likely than not, you would have multiple parts. So I'm going to go to my uh, left hand menu to where bodies are. I'm going to click on that body. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go on copy. Then I'm going to right click and click on paste. Now at the minute, it doesn't look like anything's happened because it's just copied and pasted it right over the set, the old piece that was already there. Okay. All you can see is I've got these arrows. So if I click on these arrows now, you'll see that there is another piece. It was just directly underneath it. Okay. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. And then I'm going to do this a couple of times and I'm going to just start to arrange them because the idea being that I just want to show off a few different uh, parts so you can just see it from all different angles just to show off all different parts and show that it's got a little bit of context to it. So I'm just going to move things around. Let's go there. In fact, this one, what I might do is rotate it. So if I click on this here, so I'll rotate it so it's upside down. And then I'll, because we want we've put some work into the bottom of it, we want to show off what the bottom looks like. And then I might rotate it around to make it look a little bit like it's just been thrown out of a, a toy chest. And then we do the same again. Let's copy. Now, how you arrange it is completely up to you. I won't do loads, but I'm going to do a few just to sort of show off show off like how it would work and then so obviously lego blocks a lot of the time are stacked on one another so let's stack a few so you can see how they would work let's bring that over there i find when you're moving things the best way to do it is to do it in the 2d view so it's easier for you to gauge what you're doing i'm gonna hit on okay i'm gonna do a couple more, I think. So let's go on, copy, paste. This time, let's rotate this round. So you can as well, as you see here, put in exact measurements if you wish to. So I'm going to type in 90. And then let's bring this around. And all I'm trying to do is just sort of make it look like it's a set of Lego that's just been used or is out to be used. I might do a couple more just to emphasize the point a little bit. make sure they line up so it looks like it's like leaning on something so let's
So this is probably the fiddliest part of all of it, really, is when you're trying to move things around in 3D. It's a little bit hard sometimes to judge. It just means you've got to rotate your screen around a little bit just to make it look. Right, so then I'm going to go, okay. So we'll stick at that. I think that looks okay. So we've got a few different pieces. See how it goes together. So now they're all the same color. Now, really, you have like Lego blocks. You have loads and loads of different colors. So let's try. I'm going to go A for appearance. I'm going to drag it over. I'm going to change all of the colors. So I'm just going to do a, just a range of different light colors. Again, just to try and make it look a little bit more realistic to how they would be in, in reality. Okay, and then we're going to hit close. So now we've got six blocks, different colors. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to turn those into components. So what we should have done really is we just started a new component and then started from there. But I wanted to show you how to do it this way first. And then from now on, we're going to start looking at components. So if each one of those bodies is a different Lego block. If I click on the eye, you can hide them. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click right click and go create component from body. And it's going to go down here. So I'm just going to do the same to all of these, create component from body. Now, the reason I'm doing this, it's just good practice to have them as components. Because we're doing a single piece, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you were going to do a more complex part uh, where there's moving parts that are joined together, it's important that they'd all be separate components. Um, so... For now, it's not completely necessary, but it will just be good practice to do it. So I've got components there, but component one, two, three, four, five, six doesn't really tell me what it is. So I'm going to change the name. So I'm just going to click, call it block one, uh, block one, call it block two, block three, block block five and block six okay so at the minute that's not looking too bad and what you can do and once you start to get things together it's a good idea to jump between the design and the render workspace to see how it's going to look so at the minute you can see looks okay it's sort of like gray in the middle of nowhere which is why we'll build a scene up a bit later on but I said they're a little bit too clean, a bit too shiny. Now, obviously, this is a children's toy, um, and they don't tend to stay clean for very long. They tend to get uh, dirt, smudges, dents, those sort of things. So we can insert those inform that information on there as well. So if you go online, you can have a look and find a PNG file. Now, this is a good website I found simply because um, you don't need to sign up for something. Some of these websites mean you have to try and um, register before you could download things, which gets a little bit annoying. Um, so I'm just going to type in dirt and the reason we want a PNG is because we don't want the background to anything. So I'm going to click on the one that I want I'm going to go to download. I am not a robot. Okay, so that's downloaded nice and quickly. So then what we're going to do, go to insert up here, go to decal, go to insert from my computer, and I'll go to my downloads, and I'm going to double click, and it's now selected, so I need to pick a surface for it to be on, so I'll click on this one first, and I'll zoom in, you can see what happened is the dirt has arrived like on the actual body of what I've made. Now at the minute, if you can see, it's wrapping around the edge a little bit, so if I move it around, you see it's starting to wrap around. That works sometimes, but I do find occasionally it tends to glitch out a little bit. So I, that's because we've got chain faces selected there. So I'm going to click on turn chain faces off and it's just going to stick on this one surface. So I'm going to just make it bigger. Like that and hit OK. 
and you'll see that it's got the effect that it's just sort of like dirty it's been used and that's what makes your models look a lot more realistic so i'm going to spend a bit of time now just doing the same to all the surfaces that would be seen Okay, so I think that's that'll do. That's all the surfaces are pretty much are going to be seen in terms of the render. So you can see that there's just little bits, just these little th bits of detail, just make it look like it's a little bit more realistic and not too clean. So when you go back into the render, you can see they do turn up. So again, it just makes it look that a little bit more um, how it would in reality. So that's the end really of the second part of the project. So the first part obviously was looking at making our 3D model, uh, looking at then. Uh, using constraints, sketches, extruding, those sort of things. So part two was adding appearances, adding materials to it, and then adding some decals to make it look more realistic. So the next part we're gonna have a look at is, so this really, if we were just gonna make our model and be done with it, we could be finished. The whole thing we're gonna look at for the next two parts is looking at how to just give it all again, more context, make it look more realistic. And if you're gonna do like a final render, how I had in a final submission of work, you can see how it would all work in situ.